Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. I hope you had a great day. Let's take a look at some new malicious compliance stories where people conform to the letter but not the spirit of a request. Thank you for subscribing to the channel and for hitting the like button. The first story is called You Won't Change. I worked in a shop in my late teens, 17 to 19. There was this one customer who was an absolute nightmare. Always complaining about stuff we had absolutely no control over, i.e. a pack of sweets containing less than it did a year ago. Sorry sweetheart, contact the manufacturer. Anywho, one day she comes in in a more belligerent mood and obnoxious mood than ever. The queue is long and she's at the back of the queue, whining about how long it's taking. She finally gets to the front of the queue, slams down a 20 pound note on the counter and demands change for her bus. I remind her for the 40th time that we can't give change unless she makes a purchase. A very overdramatic sigh comes across and she slams a pack of gum on the counter and gives the 20 in. I ask if she has anything smaller and she says, I've made a purchase, just take the freaking 20, I told you I need change. Ok sweetheart, you got it. As luck would have it, I'd just taken delivery of bags of change. 1p, 2p, 5p and 10p. Given her gum cost 50p, she was due a lot of change. I reached under the till, gave her 10 pounds in 1 pence pieces, 5 pounds in 5p pieces, 4 pounds in 2p pieces and a 50p for the last part of her change. She saw me stack all these bags of change on the till and went crazy. I tell her I'm fresh out of pound coins and have no notes in my till as I have just been cashed up. The contents of my till are in a time locked safe which will not open until the morning. So the only option she has is to either take a mountain of change or cancel her purchase and I will give her her 20 pounds note back. She screams that she is going to be late for her bus and wants to see the manager. I say ok and go and fetch the manager and tell her what's gone down and tell her who the customer is. My manager sighs, goes to the front of the shop, opens my till, pulls out the insert and shows her that I have literally a pound coin in my till and a bunch of small change and no notes. She tells her in no uncertain terms, either take your change or cancel the purchase and we will give her the 20 quid note back. She grabs the stack of change and storms off, screaming that she will see her day with me and that I'm going to get it. All the while I stand there with a smug smile on my face. The next story is called, always follow the rules. A few years ago I was a manager on a mining camp. I was in charge of the buses and drivers that needed to transport mine workers to where they needed to be. Because the mine is in a very remote location in Western Australia, we were flown to the mine. We would work for 12 hours a day, 2 weeks straight and then have a full week off. After 2 excellent camp managers, we ended up with a new manager and his 2 brown nosers. They didn't like anyone enjoying the job and made life crap. People started leaving, morale dropped, the usual stuff. I had started a lunchtime barbecue once a week for my team. As we were pretty much the only ones that could go to the nearest town, 130 kilometers away, I had earned a few favors from people throughout the camp, including chefs. It came to pass that I had a gut full of the bullying management style and gave notice. The week before I finished, the manager decreed that no one, while looking at me, could get a barbecue pack, steaks, sausages, onion, tongs, etc. without his express permission. The head chef couldn't help, he was watched like a hawk. So I had to get creative. We could still get crib, food for during the day, which included tomato, onions, etc. for sandwiches, bread rolls, sauces and little disposable containers and butter etc. I sent one of my drivers into town, on official business of course, to get some burger patties and other little bits that I needed. This pretty much took him out of work for the day. I spoke to one of the groundsmen to ensure that the barbecue had plenty of gas and was clean. Wednesday came around and at lunchtime we got the barbecue going. Other workers were coming around to say farewell and to have a burger with me and my team. The camp manager sent his stooges to investigate, but because I had followed the rules about getting a barbecue pack from the kitchen, nothing could be said. He tried to say that it was any use of the barbecue, but I pointed to the rules and it said barbecue packs. I rocked out of the camp to the airport and my last flight home with a big smile of satisfaction. The third story is called, as much time as you want. A few years ago, my mother started working an online job. She didn't have the time for in-person work, especially since my little sister was a chubby toddling kid and everyone else in the house had school or work. Now she got hired and worked her way up until she pretty much became the CEO's right hand woman for their home base workers here. 
She got good at her job and was offered a raise and free apartment in the Middle East so that the CEO and some other executives could work with her personally. She was torn at choosing between staying with us and leaving, but the new paycheck was almost twice what she was already earning. Pretty generous, don't you think? She got even more work done in less time. Soon she alone was doing like 60% plus of all the salary calculations for the company, plus whatever CEO and his wife Jane had her do. It was all fine for about a year and a half, until Adam was hired. The way mom described him was pretty much high school sports jock, swaggering about and acting like he was hot stuff. He eventually got into the CEO and Jane's circle of friends and started badmouthing my mom in his department and in meetings. Didn't help that Jane was jealous of how much my mom was working with the CEO. After months of workplace harassment and the CEO's visible distrust of mom, she asked him if she could end the contract early. No pay for the unfinished duration, no need to pay her ticket home, no need to get the severance package stated in the contract. She was miserable and stressed. The CEO said that he didn't want to end it early, considering that she still had about a year in the contract. Mom instead asked if she could instead go home for a month since Christmas was coming up. The CEO said, sure, take all the time you want to relax. Take all the time you want to relax. Mom agreed to that and the CEO scheduled and paid for her flights. Christmas came and went and the CEO is freaking out because my mom didn't board a return flight back to work. Her phone was ringing almost every day. The only time she picked up she put him on speaker. She had her hands full and he was basically begging her to come back. I caught a couple of snippets about how the rest of the salary people were overworked. He was even willing to increase her pay even more. He kept calling for the remainder of the contract period, but she never talked to him again, not even for the pre-Christmas pay that she never got. He even tried going through mutual contacts, didn't work. She looked pretty relaxed to be back home with us. The next story is called No Pineapples or Else. When I was in high school, my best friend and I worked at a pizza joint. We were drivers and would make pizzas between deliveries on slower days. One slow weekday evening, a bloke calls in and orders a pizza. He orders a specialty pizza that typically has pineapples and requests no pineapples are added. No problem, we get those requests all the time. But he takes it a step further. Last time you guys put pineapples on it. I swear, if I see one pineapple on my pizza, I'm coming in personally to punch you. I hang up, shocked at the unnecessary threat to a teenage boy, one who is about to handle his food and tell my buddy about the call. Immediately our wheels start turning and we devise a brilliant plan. We make his pizza exactly as he requested, but before tossing it in the oven we each grab a giant handful of pineapple and squeeze out all the juice we can onto his pizza. When we were finished there was a standing pool of fluid across the entire pan. I cook it, box it and have the pleasure of delivering it. When he answers the door he repeats the thread he made on the phone. Sir, I personally made this pizza myself and I can guarantee you will not find a single pineapple anywhere. Satisfied he takes the box from me and I head back to the restaurant. Like a giddy schoolgirl waiting for her crush to call, I stared at the phone, willing it to ring. Finally it does and the caller ID confirms my hopeful anticipation. He has lost his mind. Screaming about how he demanded no pineapple, but it's all he can taste. I calmly tell him I was the one who made and delivered it and reassured him I put no pineapple on the pizza. So please take a picture of the pizza, because if a pineapple made it onto the pizza we want to make it white. As I said before I made it myself and was extra mindful that no pineapple was added. He finished his profanity laced tirade and slammed the phone down, still waiting for what he promised. The last story is called The Perfect Time. About two years after my family moved to our smallish university town in our southwestern state of the US, the acreage around our house was sold to developers. The building noise was awful a lot of the time, but we met some great people, the workmen on the various phases, not the real estate developers. Once the first part of the development was finished enough to have neighbors living in them, the house sort of next to or behind our house sold. The new owners were veterinarians. He taught at the university and she had just opened up a practice near our house. They had dogs who apparently were not allowed into the house after dark. One of the poor dogs was an elderly spaniel who was blind and she would get lost out in the yard. 
My parents' bedroom is closest to this neighbor's house. The city has an ordinance about barking dogs, letting your dogs bark all night, etc. And these neighbors also had a brand new HOA that specifically had fines for how many times the dog barked in an hour. Who was assigned to count the barks, I never did find out. But these vets let their dogs bark for hours. We asked them nicely to make it stop. Other neighbors would go and ask them to make the dogs stop barking, but they just wouldn't. The HOA got onto them, didn't seem to change anything. Even having the cops stop by and give them a ticket for letting the dogs bark for hours every night didn't stop them. Mrs. Veterinarian told a cop and some neighbors gathered around that her dogs were angels and were not the ones barking. She would be kept up all night if her dogs were out in the yard barking all night. Clearly it must be someone else's dog and her poor babies were being picked on. So a few nights later my mom asked me to make a big batch of muffins. She set up the coffee maker and made up a tray that had everything needed to go have coffee and muffins with the new neighbors. That night when the dog started barking, mom got up to work on some grading. About 2am mom started the coffee and poured it into a thermal carafe. She made sure to make the tray look very pretty. Then she carried the tray all the way around to the veterinarian's neighbor's house. She knocked on the door and rang the bell until they answered. Then, just as sweet as pie, she said it seemed like the perfect time to really get to know them. Clearly no one in either their house or ours could sleep through their dogs barking all night. After that, the dogs didn't bother us at night. They made sure of it. In the long run, they turned into very nice neighbors, thankfully. And now it's your time to shine. Let me know what you think about the stories. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the stories? I hope you enjoyed today's video. And I hope you have a great day. Stay safe. Bye bye.